What is good guys and welcome to another vlog today. Um, my arms are a bit full, let me put the camera down for a sec. Okay, so now that I'm in the car, um, I've got a couple packages to deliver to the post office as you would have seen. Um, thank you again to people that are placing orders through Otaku Garage, it really does help support me and what I do. Um, moving on to what we're gonna do today is I actually wanna tidy up a few things that I rushed and kinda just did like temporarily to get to the dyno when I built the car with the new turbo. Um, so first thing is I'm gonna replace that vacuum line with a proper silicon one that goes to my map sensor on the ECU. I am also at the same time going to be uh, replacing the oil filter block that I have with a proper one that has a thermostat on there. Um, while I'm in summer, it's totally okay. Um, but when, I, when it's winter and I wanna drive the car I don't want my oil temps to be under 60 degrees they need to be like at operating temperature it's not good um, as well I wanted to quickly address this uh, previous video you saw me uh, with the intake manifold gasket and everything I also deleted the PCV valve uh, kind of like vacuum tube that goes from the rocker covers or the cam covers into the intake manifold and uh, after I did all of that I mentioned I think I mentioned that I had a little bit of an idle issue and uh, I actually was thinking about it the other day with semi veins and I was like, hey man, I have a thought. I was just thinking about this, that because I removed that, there's no longer that air getting in there when the engine's under vacuum, which now means that the tune's out. And uh, I plugged my laptop in and checked everything and turned out it was out. It was much richer whenever the engine was seeing a vacuum. So whenever the engine gets boost, the PCV valve closes and, sh and seals and that stops boost pressure from getting into your rocket cover, right? But under vacuum, it leaks air through and vents that into the intake manifold to you know, re reuse into the engine so it doesn't go into the atmosphere. But now that I've blocked that off because I have a catch can, that extra air isn't there anymore. So my tune was rich and it was bouncing all over the place at low idle. So once I tidied that up a little bit, it actually fixed my idle. So today, after I do those two things, I'm gonna do a little bit of tuning and tidy up uh, my map, uh, sorry, well, my fuel table in wherever I see a vacuum to just try to lean it out a little bit and get that a bit better. And I'll show you guys what I do there. Um, but otherwise, enough talking. I've been rambling on for ages. Let's get to the post office, deliver this stuff, and then when we get back, we'll get straight into the car. Okay, so I've got everything set up. This is the current uh, oil filter block that we're replacing. And we're gonna be replacing it with this guy here. Um, so it's got a thermostat built into there. Um, I'm not sure if you, oh, there you go. You can see it in through the top there, this uh, section in there. And what that essentially does is uh, it keeps the oil flowing through the filter at all times. Um, but once it reaches a temperature of about 70 degrees, the thermostat will open and then only send it through the cooler then. So instead of only running three lines, so two off the block into here and then one that then goes to the cooler and then back to the block, um, so that would only be three lines off the block and through that and everything, right? You need to run four because this needs to be able to send it back to the block if the oil isn't hot enough. So we're gonna be setting that up today as well as putting this shorter black silicon hose in for my map sensor off the ECU. Instead of going from here all the way through in and then back around under the dash over into that corner, we're gonna be going from here straight down in through there where the wideband wiring goes straight into the ECU. Um, and that's a heat resistant one as well, but I will be putting heat shield over it as well, just in case. Anyways, enough talking, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so this is the oil filter block that you just saw me take out. A little bit tedious and a pain in the butt, but it's all good. Um, what I'm gonna do is take my sensors out of this and transfer them over to the new one. Um, the top one here, this is gonna be for pressure. So oil pressure, this top one. And then this one here is going to be for oil temp. So we'll take those out with an Allen key, slip those bad boys in. Hopefully the threads are all match up. And then we'll go from there. Ha! <laughs> 
Have you guys ever started something and wished you hadn't? Because <laughs> um, I'm definitely in that situation right now. Um, I thought I had everything that I needed to make, like to get this done, um, but it looks like I don't. And the reason for that is I want to change how this is all set up. Like, if we look at how, well, where this needs to mount, so we can see the engine needs to be. Uh, on that side and cooler core needs to come out on that side. So typically it needs to be mounted in the bay somewhere like this, right? But with the space that I have here, there's just like no way for anywhere for it to go. Like, and for me to be even to mount this properly here, like I have no idea how I'm gonna even be able to mount it in there. Let alone like making sure there's enough space for this dipstick and thing. So like, I would rather kind of maybe mount it under here somewhere, but then I'm like, I want to move this cooler then behind the intercooler and then maybe mount it up and in here. It's, I don't know, man. I think, and the sucky thing is, is I want the car running like tonight. So I don't know, I guess what I'm going to do is try to find a way to like maybe jimmy it up in here where the other one used to be. Um, I'm definitely frustrated, but I need to try and figure something out, uh, which, isn't ideal i was hoping this was going to be a little bit of a simpler swap but uh i don't know maybe i should have thought this out a little bit more <laughs> um anyways i'm gonna get to uh trying to macgyver something up um and probably because i'm now spending a whole bunch more time on this it means i'm probably not going to get to putting that vac line on so yay another day that we can run that I guess um, but anyways I'm gonna get stuck back into trying to mount that somewhere maybe we can just zip tie it in somewhere with all the hoses running to it I really don't know and like I've got a couple of these bends here but I don't know they just don't work too well either so anyways I'm gonna try my best to try and figure out a way to mount this best and then uh, I'll get back to you Okay, so it's obviously gotten dark and I'm working with my iPhone light here. This is where I've kind of got everything zip tied up here so it can't move. It's uh, definitely not ideal, but it'll get me by enough to take me to the movies tonight for date night. Um, so that's kind of why I'm panicking a little bit. <laughs> um, I did have this big light set up, but I've never seen this happen here before. Look at all these bugs that are everywhere from the light. So um, pretty much put the big light over there to keep the bugs away from me. And then I've just been working with my iPhone light here. Um, and then all the hosing and everything just kind of loops back down into the cooler in the same position. Um, man, I had no idea that this was going to turn into such a crap job like this, especially such a long one. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is put this wheel on, get everything down back onto the ramps. Um, and then once I've got everything onto the ramps, I will, um, I guess, start the car up, check oil pressure and all that, make check for leaks and uh, top up the oil that's missing that came out when I changed everything over. Um, but yeah, man, literally a bitch of a job. I would prefer changing my intake manifold gasket all over again compared to doing this right now. All right, let's get to it. So taking the car for a test drive, everything seems to be good. Um, I'm gonna wait till the thermostat's meant to open at 70 degrees. So I gotta wait for uh, that dial to get to there. Um, but what I'm gonna do in the meantime is just kind of cruise around and then I might stop at 7-Eleven and get myself a nice iced coffee because man, I'm so exhausted and wrecked. Can't wait to have a hot bath and shower and just relax. Okay, so made it to 7-Eleven. 
and uh, I wanted to show you guys. So as the temperature gauge for the oil gets up to 70 degrees, what happens is I see the needle dupe back down to like 65, pretty much almost immediately. It takes a, like takes like maybe maybe 40 seconds to a minute before you see it starting to go down. Then it creeps back up. So I can definitely tell that the thermostat is opening and closing. So that's good. I'm really pumped to see what that does at the track. Um, and just hoping that you know it doesn't have any effect whatsoever in keeping my temps cool. It really should just act the same as the other one did. Um, but I'm just wondering if because it's got to heat up this much first before it opens, if that means like it doesn't have a head start or something anymore. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud and tired. Um, but I did treat myself to a nice boss uh, cafe latte. So this thing will keep me going and then uh, I'll finish this and then I'll head home. Okay, so just got fresh out of the shower feeling much more refreshed now. And uh, actually the the schedule that we had planned for today changed. May messaged me and she was like, hey, I don't really feel like going out anymore. Is it cool if we just chill out at home? So it was like kind of like a bit of a bonus for me that that happened. It's not so great that like we didn't get to go to the movies or have date night, um, but it was just good that I, I wasn't having to stress about maybe the car was gonna have problems or stuff while we drove to the cinemas and, and backwards and forwards and whatnot. So a little bit of a stress relief there. Um, but I mean, the test drive to 7-Eleven and back kind of thing was fine. The thermostat was working well. Um, obviously things are just temporarily chucked in there. Um, I really wanna change that entire setup. Uh, I'm not driving till when I come back to Australia. So like when I say not driving, not drifting at a track. Um, but yeah, today just did not go as planned. I didn't get to run the vacuum line. I didn't get to touch up the tune. So many things went wrong um, and it was just, I was so frustrated. Uh, but at the end of it, I'm glad I was able to throw everything together. I'm gonna redo that entire system. I'm gonna order some new Dash 8 hosing for it and I'm gonna reposition everything. I think I am gonna put the filter up and under where the current oil cooler is, like actually closer to the front bumper though. And then I'm gonna move the cooler to actually kind of be sideways in the center. So anyways, uh, you'll see what that's gonna look like in the future and whatnot. Um, but um, that's definitely what I wanna do. So I'm gonna order all that stuff so that when I get back from Australia, I can spend an entire day on fixing that. And then at the same time, I'm going to put in, in my power steering cooler, which I've had for like almost six months and haven't installed it yet because I wanted to relocate my oil cooler and everything all at the same time. So anyways, I prefer to always kill two birds with one stone. So that's why I always put things off to do everything all at once. So anyways, um, enough talking. I've been rambling on for ages. I know this video wasn't super entertaining, but I'm sh I hope you still enjoyed it and uh, found it educational, <laughs> if, if, if that at least. Anyways, I'm rambling on because I guess I'm exhausted and tired and I don't know what to say. So thanks heaps for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you all in the next video. Ciao, <laughs>